Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Physiology Practical as well as our application Practicable. I am myself Dr. Deepthi Karia. Today we will discuss about thalassemia, how uh, it is inherited, what are the signs and symptoms, what is the prevention, how it gets investigated and treatment. Okay. Now, so thalassemia is inherited blood disorder. Uh, here, <clears throat> that is, it causes your body to have less hemoglobin than normal and the inheritance that is autosomal recessive inheritance, autosomal recessive, okay? And that leads to commonly anemia and in severe form, it uh, may require regular blood transfusion. We will discuss uh, pathophysiology. So pathophysiology here, normally in adult hemoglobin, we all know that uh, adult hemoglobin has two alpha chain and two beta globin chains, okay? But in thalassemia, there is either defect in alpha or beta globin chain either production of the chain is reduced or production of the chain is absent okay and when there is reduced production or absence of production of this chains that results in abnormal red blood cells okay and thalassemia is classified according to that presence or absence of the globin chain if alpha chain is absent the thalassemia is alpha thalassemia and if beta chain is absent or reduced, the thalassemia is beta thalassemia, okay? Now, huh. this is also known as Coolis anemia or Mediterranean anemia. This is hemoglobinopathy and depending on absence, as I told you, of chain alpha and beta thalassemia, that is the classification. Now, uh, why is it known as Mediterranean anemia? Because it is common in this Mediterranean countries, these are mid-sea countries. Okay, including uh, India too. Uh, now, depending on the inheritance, that is either heterozygous or homozygous. Homozygous means transmission of the gene from both the parents. Okay, both the parents. So, when there is homozygous inheritance, the person is having thalassemia major. The person is having moderate to severe anemia. And when the transmission is heterozygous, which is more common, mild anemia is there and that is thalassemia mind. Now, you can see here, this is the transmission you can see here. Suppose one of the parent is beta thalassemia trait and other that is no trait. Then 50% of the children, they have beta thalassemia, they are beta thalassemia trait here. And 50% are not trait. Whereas if both the parents, okay, they are thalassemia minor, then 50% children, they are thalassemia minor, 25% thalassemia major and 25% normal. Okay. Now, uh, how this thalassemia major and minor are differentiated? Thalassemia major, that is inherited as we have discussed homozygous transmission. Homozygous transmission means abnormal, sorry, transmission. Abnormal gene is inherited from both the parents. And thalassemia minor that is inherited as heterozygous, heterozygous transmission, okay. Here abnormal gene is inherited from one parent only, okay. Here synthesis of the chain, beta chain that is absent, whereas here the chain synthesis is reduced. Then if beta chain is absent, instead of that gamma or delta chains are produced, so there is presence of HBF which is markedly increased in case of thalassemia major, whereas it is either normal or slightly increased in case of thalassemia minor. Lifespan of thalassemia major is short as well as, as compared to thalassemia minor. Now, signs and symptoms. Uh, the person is having, depending on major or minor, and depending on the number of chain synthesis, uh, it, the person may be having mild to severe anemia, failure is there, easy fatigability, and jaundice. Other symptoms you can see dark urine because of this jaundice. Abnormal swelling is found. Easy fatigability as we have discussed. Weakness. Facial bone deformities are also found. And yellow discoloration of skin. That is because of hemolysis and jaundice. Okay. Now diagnosis. It, thalassemia can be diagnosed by complete blood count. You can find anemia. Okay. Hemoglobin electrophoresis. Okay. That is thalassemia test. If we found uh, that HBF is present, then it is the one of the diagnostic tests. 
also it can be diagnosed by high performance liquid chromatography and dna testing prevention here that is prevented by testing of pregnant females if the female is thalassemia threat then uh, test for the uh, male partner okay you have to identify the carriers that is also used to prevent avoid marriage between two carriers okay along with that prenatal diagnosis is also advantageous to prevent the thalassemia genetic counseling and genetic testing these are all the preventive measures and management if the child is having thalassemia if the thalassemia is mild they do not require any treatment only follow up and other care that is for anemia and if the child is having uh, if uh, both the if the person is vitra thalassemia trait okay then counseling is required okay uh, so that uh, the trait may not lead to thalassemia major childbirth okay all the persons with genetic disorders they also require counseling for the uh, prevention of the thalassemia okay uh, another is if there is anemia people with severe thalassemia require medical treatment sometimes blood transfusion is also required if it is mild anemia it is not required but in case of major thalassemia it requires blood transfusion is required okay if the person is having repeated blood transfusion patient is having iron overload okay so that iron overload also that is uh, treated with uh, chelating agents that you will learn more in medicine okay and bone marrow transplantation that also may offer the possibility of a cure in young people okay so this is all about treatment part so this is all about thalassemia thank you so much